Hello again, everyone. So today what we're going to do is go over the Roland JD08 envelope generator. All right, let's get started. So it sets the JD08 envelope generator apart from typical envelope generators is the fact that you can control the levels of each stage of the envelope curve. So ADSR, those are the four stages of, of an envelope generator. However, we have a total of nine sliders in the envelope generator section. So what's up with that? <laughs> Why do you need nine sliders for four parameters? Well, let me explain. So each of these parameters is labeled with either a T or an L. T meaning time, L meaning level. So each component of the envelope generator has its own built-in attenuator. So with all of that said, let's Let's, let's take a look at what that really means. Let's uh, put it to practical use. Okay. So I'm just using an initial, uh, an initial patch at the moment. All right. So let's switch this over to, mm, let's go TVA or VCA. Basically, uh, we're going to use the envelope generator to control the uh, volume of the patch. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower all of the faders for right now. Okay, so how much time will it take for us to reach the maximum amplitude of our patch? Well, that's where T1 comes into play. So let's just say I want the patch to fade in. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take the attack time and I'll just raise it a bit. Not too much, just just enough. We don't want an infinite attack time. Okay, so that's time number one. All right, now let's move over to T2 for decay. For right now, I'm going to skip over the L's. Um, I'll explain those on the way back. Okay, so T2, this is our decay phase. In other words, how long will it take for us to fall to the sustain portion of our curve. So I'll raise that fader a bit. Okay, T3, our sustain. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna raise this a bit. So what this what this will do is it'll just give us, uh, this will determine how much time we stay in the sustain phase of the um, envelope curve. And then finally, release. How long will it take for us to fade out, for it to completely fade out? Okay, all right, so we have an attack. Um, so we have our envelope generator set up. All right, now let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing, nothing at all. And again, that's what sets the JD08 apart from the rest because each of the timing mechanisms for each, for each phase. <laughs> Let me, let's go back. Okay, so each phase of the attack, uh, decay, sustain, release envelope has its own level, has its own uh, attenuator, as it were. Only when I raise the levels will you, will you hear the uh, envelope generator take effect. So let's raise the level of the attack. So what just happened there is we heard the we heard the um, we heard the uh, the amplitude of our patch rise or um, fade in as it were. Perfect. Okay. Now let's raise the level of our decay. Raise the level of the sustain. Good. And now finally, raise the level of release. Wow. 
that's a maximum sustain and maximum release. Dial that release down a bit. Maximum sustain. Turn the sustain down. Turn the decay down. Get rid of all of our levels. And now we're back to having nothing at all. So again, that is what sets the JD-08's envelope generator section apart from typical envelope generator curves. Okay, so now let's talk about the time key follow parameter. And it's actually uh, a little bit easier than uh, how it sounds. It's not, as, it's, not, it's not intimidating at all, in my opinion. It actually makes perfect sense. Uh, the time key follow uh, basically determines the effectiveness of the decay envelope or the defa decay phase of the envelope. And the effectiveness is completely contingent upon the pitch that you play with the keyboard. So for this demonstration, we're going to use the pitch envelope just to make it all the more noticeable. Okay, so. So you hear that uh you hear that fluctuating pitch glide. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the key follow to its full positive value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the octave of the keyboard. Now, we can still hear we can still hear a pitch glide, but significantly faster than what it was before. That's because the higher the pitch, the faster the uh, the, uh, the faster the uh, pitch glide. If I lower the octave, now let's go. T let's not go too low. The slower the pitch glide. Now, if I dial this down to its full negative value, the exact opposite happens. Lower frequencies have faster pitch glides, whereas higher frequencies have longer pitch glides. And that's it. That's how it works. Plain and simple. <clears throat> okay, so now let's experiment with the envelope generator as it relates to TVF. Okay, so the envelope generator, in effect, is going to determine the effectiveness of this TVF section. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so for, for starters, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, first of all, make sure that I'm in TVF mode by pressing this button, and then I'm just gonna lower all of the faders. I'm particularly interested in the attack decay phase uh, as it relates to the envelope, so let's get started. Okay, so. Right now, it sounds completely unaffected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my cutoff frequency is dialed to zero, resonance is dialed down to zero, envelope generator, the envelope generator uh, amount. Oh, and by the way, this is also bipolar. It has negative values as well as positive values. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it a neutral zero. Key follow, we, did, we talked about that before. Uh, we're going to leave this neutral for uh, the purposes of uh, TVF. Okay. So at this at this point we shouldn't hear anything. All right. So we have our levels, we have our t and we have our faces. Attack, decay, attack level, decay level. All right. So what if I want the low pass filter to what what if I want let's just say I have an imaginary dial and what if I want to turn that imaginary dial for the cutoff to the right gradually? Well what I would do is I would set an attack time <clears throat> uh, fairly well not high attack time but a reasonable attack time. Okay. And in order for in order in order to uh, hear the effectiveness of this, I do have to have a decay as well. So let's dial up the decay. Okay. Now, again, we shouldn't get anything at this point because of our levels. 
So let's increase our levels. We want these to be, f we want the attack and decay phase to be fully effective. 100%. There we go. Okay, now the TVF section also has uh, a unique characteristic or a unique parameter as the envelope filter. I'm sorry, uh, that's the envelope amount. And like I mentioned before, it's bipolar negatives positives so why is that well I'll show you so let's dial this up to its full effectiveness on the positive end of the number line All right there we are so again what's happening here is the attack phase is ultimately determining how long it takes for us to dial the cutoff frequency or the cutoff parameter to its full right position. If I shorten, let's see. If I shorten the decay, I get kind of a percussive sound. Hmm, if I change the waveform, I get sort of an 8-bit kick drum. Okay, <laughs> and now I'm just having fun. So going back to the original example, we get a nice cutoff frequency change over time. So what happens if I dial it negative? Well, we're not really hearing much of a change here. The reason being is because the parameters have been uh, inverted, or the effectiveness of the parameters have been inverted. So in other words, how my cutoff frequency is dialed down to 0%. If I dial it to 100%, this is what happens. So now effectively the knob is being turned to its full left position. Positive. Let's see here. Wait, hold on. <laughs> ah, here we are. Positive. Swell in. Negative. Fade out. And that's it. There we have it. Okay, guys. So that pretty much does it for Roland JDOA Envelope Generator. I'm hoping that that was helpful. Um, I remember when I first picked up the JDOA, it took a moment for me to wrap my mind around um, the stages the ADSR stages along with the levels again Roland is a very very different animal when it comes down to um, the usual components of synthesis but um, we got that handled we got that taken care of so if you guys have any more questions please feel free to leave them in the comments until then I'll talk to you later